You are listening to the Holistic Lifestyle Guide Podcast, the show that guides you on your holistic lifestyle journey to a healthy body, mind, and soul aligned with nature. Hello and welcome to episode number 40 of the Holistic Lifestyle Guide Podcast. This episode is all about herbs and spices for your health. So everyone knows that herbs and spices make your food taste better, but did you know that they also have a lot of health benefits? So in this episode, I'm going to go over the best herbs and spices for health, the best herbs and spices for cooking. Those are two different categories, although they can overlap a little bit. And I'm also going to talk briefly about the most common methods that you can prepare herbs medicinally and the most common categories of how herbs are beneficial for your health. And I'm also going to give you my favorite resource for herbs and spices so you can dive deeper into the world of herbalism if you are interested. So I am a huge fan of herbs and spices. I just love them because, like I said, they can make food taste better, but you're also, um, you know, making your health better. So, like... Great. What a great combination. And, you know, herbs and spices can be bought cheaply. You don't have to spend a lot of money. There are some spices that are a little spendy, but there's ways to, um, you know, live on a budget and still use herbs and spices. You know, not only is it cheaper, like you can buy them in bulk, but also you don't have to spend a lot of money on extra ingredients and because you know when you're when you're cooking with herbs and spices you can make things taste better and you don't need to do fancy recipes you can just cook up cook up some rice and use the right herbs and spices to make it just be amazing so i'm going to give a quick introduction to herbalism in this section in this first half we're going to talk about herbs so herbs can be used in cooking or for health purposes so that would be culinary herbs or medicinal herbs and medicinal would be to make essential oils or tea or things like that so all her all herbs have medicinal properties and they grow in nature so it makes sense to use herbs in your diet and many people don't know this but most pharmaceutical drugs are derived from plants however they extract only parts of the plant so you're not getting the plant as a whole as nature intended and you know here at holistic lifestyle guide we're all about holistic you know we we want things to be whole we want things to be natural so that's just another great reason to ingest herbs in your diet there is at least one herb for every ailment However, herbs shine best when used for prevention purposes. They have more of a subtle effect. So this is why most herbs aren't useful for emergencies. Basically though, however, herbs are most natural ways to prevent chronic health issues. So it's a great way for prevention. So there's two ways to use herbs. Generally, an herb is either used in cooking along with spices or use medicinally, either in the prevention of disease or to treat an illness. Now, when I say treat an illness, like I said before, it's not good for emergencies, so they're a preventative thing, but there are some uh, exceptions where you can use some herbs and spices when treating an illness. Um, You're probably not going to get as immediate of a result as if you had used drugs, but of course, at that point, drugs is, you know, what you're going to turn to. So this is why I like herbs and spices as preventative. But many herbs can be used for both. So some work better to eat and some work better to drink as a tea. So now I'm going to talk about some of the basic methods and instructions for using herbs. So tea is one of the most popular and common ways to ingest herbs. So you really only need a couple tablespoons and some boiling water and let it sit in the water for a while. This is best for daily use of herbs for general health, for upkeep of your wellness. So to do it on a daily basis. I usually drink herbal tea at night before bed. And there's a couple that I'm really into at the moment that 
I just absolutely love and it's so inexpensive. If you think buying herbal tea is expensive, the way to do it is to use the dried herbs and the right ones that provide enough flavor. So currently what I am drinking is fennel tea and cardamom. Cardamom pods are amazing. They're so flavorful, you don't need a lot. You only need maybe 10 little, um, not the big pods, but the when you break the pods open, you get the little tiny balls on the inside. And then fennel seeds, of course, are really small too. So you really only need like a teaspoon. And when you mix these two together, they're amazing. And cumin seeds are also really good to mix in that tea. So those herbs are used often in Ayurveda and those are good for digestion. So those are great herbs to put in your in some boiling water at the beginning of your day or your the end of your day. So the next type that I'm going to talk about is an infusion. So infusions use a little bit more herbs, more like an ounce, and then you need more water as well. So you sit them in a mason jar covered up for many hours, preferably overnight. So this is best for daily herbs for general health and preventative and maintenance purposes. This is best for herbs that have highly volatile oils. It produces a stronger flavor and it, it extracts more of the constituents of the herbs. So another one that's kind of similar is a decoction. So a decoction is using a little bit less of the dried herbs. Um, you could also use fresh, but if you use fresh, um, use a little bit more. Um, so a decoction is where you start with cold water and then you place it on the heat and then you bring it to a boil and then you simmer it for up to 45 minutes. So this type of uh, method is good for roots, barks, berries, and seeds of the plant. The ones that can, you know, stand a little bit more cooking. Another type of method for, t for using herbs is to make a syrup. So... These are good for when you're making such as elderberry syrup, which is the most common one for colds and flus. So you can take a, a decoction that you've already prepared and mix it in with some honey and simmer it over low heat. Or you can put the honey in later because really high heat will destroy the beneficial properties of the honey. So then once you do that, you can let it cool. Um, and then put it in a glass container stored in the fridge and this stays good for a couple months. So this is a really good thing to do for medicinal things like I said if you're making an immunity syrup or a cough syrup. Another thing that's similar is an elixir. So with an elixir you can use dried herbs um, I, I like to use ha glass jars so they usually recommend using a, like a glass mason jar and fill it um, if you're using dry herbs, herbs, fill it half full. If you're using fresh herbs, you can fill it all the way full. And then what you do is you put some type of alcohol in it. Um, they usually recommend brandy and put a little bit of honey in there as well. And then this is something that you're going to store for six weeks in a cool, dry place. And then every couple weeks, you're going to stir it or a couple times a week, give it a little stir. And then after six weeks, you strain out the herbs. And then what you're left with is an elixir, which can be used very similar to the way that syrups are used. So the next one is also very similar, and that's a, tinc a tincture. This is where you fill the herbs in a glass container and then you fill the rest of the container with alcohol. Now they usually use vodka for this. so then you um, put it in a, a jar, like the, the other example. And then this is where you're going to store it for six to eight weeks and make sure that the alcohol is still covering the herbs all the time. If it's not, then just add more alcohol and shake it every day. And then after six to eight weeks, you strain the herbs and then you store it. So that's what a tincture is. Very similar to a elixir actually. And then the last one that I'm going to cover is a poultice. This is used topically. This is the only method of herbs that is used on the skin. So you use either directly on the skin or a towel or a thin mesh. So if you're using fresh herbs for this, they have to be crushed finely. But if you're using dry herbs, then you can just mix it with a little bit of water. And then you're, use, you're using cold water for inflammation if you have an inflammation problem. And 
you use hot water if you need to increase the circulation. So it's going to depend on what type of ailment you have. So basically the idea is to spread the, the mashed herbs onto your skin and wrap it with a bandage. Or you can wrap the herbs in muslin or gauze and then secure that onto the skin. These are really good ways to um, help soothe skin irritations or if you have pain in one specific part of your body. So now I'm going to switch gears a little and talk about the medicinal categories of herbs. So this is going to be when you're looking for an herb for a specific ailment, you want to choose an herb according to its properties. So herbs used medicinally are a great preventative measure against chronic illnesses. But like I said, they should not be used by themselves for serious health issues. So if you're interested in preventative ways to use these herbs, then this is a great part to pay attention. So the first one I'm going to talk about is alterative. The alterative category of herbs normalizes the body and purifies the blood. These are good for infections. Um, so some types that you can use for this would be echinacea, dandelion root, red clover, alfalfa, calendula flower, ginseng, licorice, raspberry leaf. There's probably a lot more, but those are just probably some of the common ones that you might have heard of. So the next one is an analgesic. Analgesic removes pain. So if you have some type of pain, you can make a poultice using one of these um, herbs like chamomile or lemongrass, skullcap, turmeric, ginger, and valerian. Those are some good ones for relieving pain. And then there is antacids. These neutralize acid in the stomach. So if you regularly take antacids and you want to start taking herbs instead, you can try things like dandelion root or slippery elm bark. Those are both good for that. If you suffer from muscle cramping, you can take some antispasmodics. Some examples of this would be cayenne pepper, chamomile, skullcap, lavender, lemon balm, mullein leaf or nettle leaf. Those are not the same thing, but they're just both leaves. Um, valerian's another good one. So another uh, category is astringent. You might hear this talked about a lot. So astringent basically means anti-inflammatory. It constricts the tissues. These are best for wound healing, and they're also good for hemorrhoids. So the types of herbs you would want to use for that would be aloe vera, calendula, cayenne pepper, cinnamon, dandelion root, mullein leaf, peppermint, raspberry leaf, rose hips. There's a lot of them. The next category is carminatives. So carminatives are good for digestive issues like relieving intestinal pain, bloating, and gas, and things like that. So some examples for that would be astragalus, ginger, chamomile, cinnamon, cloves, ginseng, lemon balm, lemongrass, valerian, and lavender. The next category is demulcents. Demulcents soothe inflamed tissues. These are best for digestive issues and also sinus problems. So if you have too much uh, phlegm in your system, you can use burdock, ginseng, marshmallow root, mullein leaf, slippery elm bark, milk thistle, licorice, or oat straw. The next category is diuretics, and what these do is encourage urine flow. So these are good for if you are suffering from water retention or kidney stones, or if you have a urinary infection. So some of these good herbs for this are astragalus, elderberries, marshmallow, nettle leaf, burdock, dandelion, oat straw, red clover, clover, or hawthorn, hawthornberry. The next one is emollients. Emollients are good for soothing and softening the skin. You might have seen in your bottle of lotion, it'll say probably emollients on there because that's, they're probably using some of these ingredients. So some ingredients for that would be aloe vera, that's a common one, marshmallow root, slippery elm bark, 
Of course, these are only going to be in natural lotions. You're not going to find these types of things in mainstream lotions. So I always recommend that people either make their own, which is so easy, or to buy some, you know, products from companies that do natural stuff, which is, you know, because everything you put on your skin is, it absorbs. So the less toxic ingredients you can put on your skin, the better. The next category is expectorants. So you might have heard this used with cough syrup. This expels excess mucus. So some herbs that are good for this are mullein, ginseng, lemon, lemongrass, licorice, nettle leaf, slippery elm bark, and red clover. The next one is laxatives, and I'm pretty sure you all have heard of those. Those will stimulate bowel movements. So what are some herbs for that? You can take some aloe vera, you can take buckthorn, slippery elm, marshmallow root, chamomile, or dandelion. The next one is nervines. This is this, the category of herbs that calms your nerves. So some examples of this would be chamomile, hops, passion flower, lemon balm, skullcap, valerian. There's probably a lot more. Of course, these, these ones that I'm naming off are usually the most commonly known ones. There are literally thousands of herbs like for this. So, you know, there's probably hundreds if you really want to get down to it. So the ones that I'm giving for examples are just off the top of my head that I researched a little bit. So the next category is stimulants. And these are herbs that will increase your energy, stimulate the nervous system, and most likely you have heard of some of these ginkgo biloba, uh, cayenne pepper, cinnamon, ginseng, ginger, peppermint, and astragalus. So the last herb that I'm talking about are, are tonics, and these are basically a general invigoration for the whole body. Tonics are good in general, just overall. So some really good herbs to take on a regular basis. So some of these would be burdock, dandelion root, ginseng, hawthorn berry, alfalfa, and milk thistle. Of course, like I said, there's probably hundreds that you could take. So now I'm gonna switch gears and talk about some of the best herbs that you can use for cooking. So a lot of people out there um, you know, they're not great cooks or they don't like to cook and this might be a problem that herbs can fix because it, it sure helped me. I mean, I can make some of the most amazing meals with some of these herbs and I'm going to go over the most common ones now. Now, you probably have heard of most of these and I'm going to give some of the ways that they're good for you and how you can use them. So let's start with basil. Basil is one of my favorites, and it's just about one of the most fragrant and potent herbs that there are. So always get fresh if you can, because oh, there is a world of difference. If you take some fresh basil and chop it up and smell it, it doesn't smell anything like the dried basil. So if you're into Italian food like pizza, pasta, or spaghetti, basil is amazing for all of those. It's, it's a must. <laughs> so, um, and here's a tip. It's best added last to preserve the flavor. So if you're gonna, if you cook basil, if you cook fresh basil, it, the flavor won't be strong anymore and the color will fade. Or I shouldn't say fade, it actually gets like a, a really icky dark green that's not, doesn't look fresh anymore. So I always put it on last. And that's true for most fresh herbs. So basil has actually been known to alleviate indigestion and fever and colds and flu, nausea, constipation, nervous disorders, muscle cramps, and kidney and urinary disorders. So it's great. It's just one of my favorite herbs. And every year I plant multiple pots full of herbs and I just absolutely love it. So basil and cilantro are my two favorite herbs, and cilantro is the next one I'm going to talk about. So you might have heard that some people think that cilantro tastes like soap, and that is a weird thing. It's like a genetic thing that those people have, and oh, I'm so thankful that I'm not one of those people, and I hope you're not either, because cilantro is so good for you, and if you can taste the actual flavor, it's so good. 
So <clears throat> cilantro is a must for Mexican cooking because it's one of the main ingredients in salsa. It also goes amazingly well with rice and lime juice. So that's one of my favorite meals actually is to just cook up, cook up some basmati rice and sprinkle some lime juice in there and I kind of go heavy on the cilantro because I love it so much but it's one of my favorite meals. So uh, cilantro is also used extensively in Indian cuisine. So like basil, cilantro is delicate. So don't add this to cooked food until it is done. And then sprinkle it on top and it stays pretty green and the flavor stays great. It's amazing. So cilantro is good for releasing toxins from the body. It gets rid of those heavy metals. So I'm sure there's a lot of other good uses for it. It also helps to cool down um, overheating. So in the summer is when you really want to eat a lot of cilantro. So the next herb on my list, which is my third favorite actually, is rosemary. Rosemary is usually bought dried or left to fully dry before using. It works best when it's dry. It's great with chicken, potatoes, and bread. It's one of the best smelling herbs. Even dried rosemary smells amazing. Um, rosemary has really good benefits for your memory. That's probably how it is best known. So the next one on this list is oregano. Oregano is used around the world, most commonly in Italian cooking, such as pizza sauce, spaghetti sauce, anything Italian. It is rich in antioxidants and has antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties. Another similar herb is thyme. Thyme has a wide variety of uses. Um, you can use thyme to help clear bronchial problems um, it's good for diarrhea. It's, and um, as far as what it's, what you can put it in, it's good in Italian cooking, like rosemary and thyme. And also, it can stand being cooked for a long time too. <laughs> That's kind of uh, ironic that thyme can be cooked for a long time. So um, when you're making uh, chicken broth, chicken stock, you can use a whole sprig of thyme, like just throw the whole thing in there whole and that can withstand the long cooking times necessary to make that stuff. The next herb that I'm going to talk about is parsley. Parsley looks a lot like cilantro, but it has a, a milder flavor and a more earthy flavor. I, I just love it though. It can be used on most foods, um, vegetables, soups, fish, rice, stir fries. It's very rich in vitamin C, it is an antioxidant and also protects against cancer and heart disease. So parsley is one of those amazing herbs that's good for so many things. And it goes on so many foods too. So the last herb I'm going to cover is sage. So along with rosemary and thyme, sage has many medicinal uses, including treating headaches, night sweats, diarrhea, and colds and flus. Sage is most commonly used to season wild game. It can also be drunk as a tea. In ancient times, it was thought to promote wisdom, which is probably where the term wise old sage comes from. So now that I've given you some examples of herbs, you might have a really strong interest to get more into this and to buy them, um, either grow them yourself or you can harvest them from the wild as well. But my favorite way is to order them online. Um, the ones that you get online are dried, of course, but sometimes that's your only option, especially in the winter time. So if you want to order them online, I have a f my favorite resource for herbs, and that is Mountain Rose Herbs. They are one of my favorite companies to get herbs from. They're very inexpensive and they have everything. So I order my, um, the herbs that I use for tea and cooking and spices as well. So I will leave a link down in the show notes for you to check out Mountain Rose Herbs if you're interested in buying some dried herbs online. So now I'm going to switch to spices. This is the other half of the episode. I'm going to talk all about spices. So 
when you think of spices, you think of spicy, but not all herbs are, or I'm sorry, not all spices are spicy. Spices can be used in cooking or medicinally, but you, people tend to use them more in cooking, but as medicine. So not really, like you're not going to be making syrups with spices, you know, things like that. Um, so a little interesting fact about spices. There are somewhere around a hundred different spices in the world. And back in the old days, they used to trade spices. Spices were so um, uh, valued that they actually used them as currency. Yeah, that's pretty crazy, isn't it? And um, so let's get right into it. Let's talk about some of the most common spices that are also good for your health. The first one I'm going to talk about is cayenne pepper. So the incredible thing about cayenne pepper is it can actually be used to stop bleeding. Now I wouldn't use this if you have a severed limb, of course, but you can actually put it directly on wounds, um, just a small wound, of course. Um, and I've even heard this, that you can take it internally to prevent heart attacks. That's pretty insane to think about. So cayenne pepper is commonly used in Mexican food or, you know, basically anything where you want a lot of kick. If you want to make anything spicy, just add a little bit more cayenne pepper. So the next one is cinnamon. This is similar to cayenne in that it is warming. So it's a good, it's a good cinnamon to drink as a tea if you want to warm up. It balances out cold foods like fruits. And I think that's why they put it on, um, like cooked apples and desserts like are good for cinnamon too. So cinnamon is useful for treating diarrhea, muscle cramps, indigestion, and gas. So the next spice I'm going to talk about is cumin. And I absolutely love cumin. I have seen this described as a spice and an herb, but since it comes from the dried seed of the plant, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about it as a spice. So cumin is used almost everywhere around the world, mostly in dishes like hummus, chutneys, lentils, chili, beans, even chicken. It's useful for eliminating and preventing gas as well as being good for the heart. So I mentioned earlier that cumin is a good spice to use in uh, herbal tea. Uh, that's one of the, um, I, I like to put cumin seeds in my tea. And another one of those is fennel, which is the next one I'm going to be talking about. So fennel, it's actually a vegetable that has stalks that look like celery, but the seeds are what are used as spices. So these little seeds, they are a powerhouse of nutrients. They have lots of minerals, antioxidants, even fiber. So these are good for indigestion and relieving gas. That's why I like to drink them with tea because they're really good for your digestion. So fennel seeds go, fennel seeds go well in breads and soups, meat, poultry, sauces. You can also chew the seeds after a meal or add them to tea, like I said, and that will help with digestion. And fennel actually helps to improve your breath as well. So you can chew on a couple of those after you eat your meal if you can't get to some mouthwash or brushing your teeth. So the next one I'm going to talk about is ginger. Ginger is one of the best spices for digestive issues. It's also good for circulation. It is excellent for colds, especially when you use it with honey and lemon. Ginger, honey, and lemon, and even garlic are some of the most potent things you can take for your immune system. So ginger has a pretty strong flavor and it's a little spicy, so it might take some getting used to if you aren't already familiar with it. I absolutely love it. I put it in uh, stir fries. I like to put it in, like I make some rice and chicken and I put some bell peppers in there and some garlic as well. Ginger and garlic go really good together. You can also drink ginger tea. I prefer to eat it in my food, but you can also drink it as a tea. Um, it's also good on a lot of Asian foods. Um, you can even use it for fish or chicken. So the next spice I'm going to talk about is turmeric. This is widely known. Everybody has can recognize it. It's that pungent yellow spice that, you know, everybody says is so good for you. Um, it contains 
curcumin, which is the active ingredient that gives it its antioxidant properties and anti-inflammatory properties. Um, so it has been proven if you take curcumin as a supplement along with black pepper, you will get much better absorption. So that is a tip. If you're ever using turmeric, always put in some black pepper with it too. That will help to absorb it a lot better. So turmeric is most commonly used in curries and Indian foods. I like to put my turmeric in kitchari. Um, kitchari is not a very popular meal, so I'll explain what that is. Kitchari is an Ayurvedic meal that is made up of basmati rice, lentils, or as they say in Ayurveda, mung dal. That's another way of basically lentils, split peas, split beans. And then what you do is take a bunch of these um, spices, uh, cumin is one of them, um, turmeric and black pepper, um, a couple spices. You can Google kitchari recipe and find some. They vary. Um, a lot of people put different things in there. I also like to put chicken in mine, although the main purpose of kitchari is to be a complete meal um, with proteins, carbs, and... Um, it also is good for digestion. It's one of the easiest foods to digest. In fact, in Ayurveda, they like to put people on um, like a cleanse where all you eat for a couple days is kitchari. That's how cleansing kitchari is. And also, since we're on the subject of herbs with this podcast episode, kitchari is really good with cilantro. So cilantro, like I said, it's a very detoxifying herb. So cilantro is the perfect herb to sprinkle on top of your kitchari. So like I said, it's it's one of the best meals you can make. And so I highly recommend checking out a kitchari recipe and seeing how that goes for you. You can tweak it depending on what types of herbs you like, what types of, what types of spices, but generally it's going to have, you know, curcuma, you know, turmeric and, and those sorts of things. So, um, that's the end of this episode. I hope that you got some inspiration to start eating more herbs and spices and using them for your health. I've actually got a couple of reference charts that are printable that contains 15 of the most common culinary herbs medicinal herbs and spices and you can get that in my Etsy shop so there's three pages um, there are three separate ones so you can check those out I will leave a link down in the show notes if you're interested in those so those those reference charts are gonna have the name of 15 of these herbs and spices 15 on each page so there's 45 total and then it's gonna have a little picture of what the herb or spice looks like what the flavor profile is or the properties and what foods it goes in. And in the case of the medicinal one, it's going to have a list of all the conditions that it's really good for when it comes to making um, herbal teas and things like that. So you can check that out in the show notes below. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode of Holistic Lifestyle Guide podcast. Be sure to visit my website where you can read articles about holistic health and wellness. You can subscribe to get freebies delivered to your inbox every Tuesday. I like to give people free printables. So thank you so much for listening and have a great week.